I'm going to go over relational geometry. It's a cool way to connect uh, pieces of geometry to others in your model. Okay, so I'm going to do a demo about uh, attractor points, basically using points to generate uh, gradual change in your model. Basically, I'm going to create a grid of circles and have the diameter of those circles respond to the location of certain control points. I'm going to start with a point. And as always, I'll go to set one point and type in zero. This will be my origin. So from here, I want to create a grid of points. So I can do that through two move operations. I'm going to create the first one, uh, create a move node, plug in my point into the geometry. And then for my translation uh, vector, um, I'm going to plug in a unit Z, uh, X vector. So again, this will just move it one unit in the X direction. And I don't want to just move it once by one. I want to move it a series of times. And each time I want to move it by a different amount. So this is going to give me basically a series of points spaced equally apart. So in order to do that, I'm just going to plug in a series of numbers into this factor uh, input on the X vector. So again, I'm going to create a series. I'm going to start at 0, step by 1, and we'll just start with a count of 10. So we can just keep the defaults in the series, plug in here. And now this node, if we hide the original point, will basically give us a series of 10 points each time moved one uh, unit over. So once we have that geometry, we can plug it into another move node. So I'm just going to copy and paste the move, plug the geometry here. And this time, instead of moving in the x direction, I want to move it into the y direction. So I'm going to create a unit y vector, plug that into here. So you see, it's the same thing again. Uh, it's moved all of those points by one. Here, I'll just use the same series component to drive the y vector, because I want to always have the grid be square. So as I change these parameters, I want both dimensions to change. I'll plug it into here. You see, again, this is a data issue, because it's only uh, moving the points one at a time. So it's taking the first point and moving it by the first y vector. So you get this line. And here again, what we want to do is we want to graft one of these moves so that every point moves by every vector. So if we just go to this vector plugin, do graft, we'll get that grid of points. Okay, so hopefully by now this is starting to make a little bit of sense why we graph this. Basically, we have all the points on a flat array. And then we graphed this one up into the next dimension. So all of these are now on, on their own branches. And then when it does this move, it'll basically take uh, all of these, every item in every branch, and move them by every vector in this list. And now we get the grid. OK, so now we have a grid of points. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a circle very simply at each point. So I'm going to use this, just type in circle into the search bar and use the circle CNR node. This will create a circle at a given center point, normal direction, and radius. We're going to plug all the points from the G output of the move command. So this is our grid of points. Plug that into the C for the center. And you see right away it has some defaults. So it's going to create these circles. And we want to control this radius starting out with a slider. So I'm going to make a slider. And see now that that slider controls the radius, we don't have to change the normal because it defaults to the Z, which is what we want. OK, so now we have this grid of circles. And what I want to do now is uh, start to control the sizes of the circles based on another piece of geometry in my scene. So what I'm going to do is create a point in Grasshopper, so, uh, I mean a Rhino. So go back to Rhino and create a point somewhere in your scene. Just place it there. Now go back to Grasshopper, create a point node, and then right click, go to set one point, and select your point in Rhino. So now this Rhino point, you can move it within Rhino, just like any other piece of geometry. And it's actually being referenced within Grasshopper. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to get the distance from this point to the centers of all the circles. And I want that distance to be tied to the size of the circle. So to get the distance between uh, any set of points, I'm going to use the distance node in Grasshopper. 
And for A, I'm going to feed in my reference point, and into B, I'm going to feed in my list of points. And this will basically replicate the same structure from our list of points, but now all of these will be the distances between my original point and all the points. You can see that it's inheriting this complex data structure based on how we made those points. So there's actually 10 branches of 10 points each. Those branches actually represent the original points. So the first branch of this data set will represent those 10 points and then so on and so forth. In terms of our future analysis, because we're just going to be one-to-one -one calculating distances and setting the sizes, we don't need that complex data structure, so we can actually flatten that structure at the output of the move node. So if we right-click on G and go to flatten, you can see that now it's just created a long list of, 10, of 100 points without any of the uh, complex structure from before. And you can see that it's fed into our circles, and now we're just generating a straight list of 100 circles and a list of 100 distances. This will probably work with a complex data structure, but since we don't really need it, I'm just going to get rid of it right at the source. All right, so now we have distances and circles, and we want to relate um, the two. I'm going to use a remapping node, which does uh, basically the same thing that this gradient did. So remember in the gradient, we specified an upper value and a lower value, and then we fed in our components and gave us a color. So there's actually a node in uh, Grasshopper, which does basically the same thing, but instead of mapping values to colors, it maps values from one range into another range. Because what I want is, I want to take the position of the distance in the range from the minimum and maximum and map it to some minimum maximum radius. What I'll do first is I will adapt the minimum maximum setup we had from before. So I'll just copy this sort and min max nodes. I'm going to plug in all the distances here. So this is going to do the same thing. It's basically going to sort all my distances and figure out what the smallest distance is and what the biggest distance is. I'm going to use this to um, figure out how to map my data. Then I will bring in the remap numbers node. So you can just type in map or remap. You get this node. This will basically take uh, any value and map it from one range, which is the source range, and then map it onto a target range. My source range is the minimum and maximum of my distances. And my target range, I'm going to set myself. So I'm going to be able to basically specify the smallest circle in my model and the biggest circle in my model. So in order to um, plug in these inputs, I need to specify two domains. So he, here they default both to 0 to 1. I have these numbers separately. I want to basically make a domain that goes from this number to this number. And for that, there is a construct domain node. So if you type in domain uh, six or seven items down, it's going to come up with this node. This node is very simple. You basically feed it in a minimum and a maximum and it's going to make that range for you. Okay, so I'm going to plug that into my source. So this is going to basically take any number, it's going to take it from this domain into uh, the range of circle sizes that I want. And that range I'm going to set myself, so I'm going to copy and paste this domain creator node. I'm just going to make two sliders. The first one I'm going to set to 0.1, and the second one I'm going to set to say 0.5 plug that into the A and B, and I'm going to plug that into my target. So whatever my distance is, it's going to get remapped to something between 0.1 and 0.5. So I'll plug in my original distances into the value. So this is, these are my remap numbers, and again I have 100 values, but this time instead of just saying the distances, it's some range between 0.1 and 0.5. And now I'm going to plug that result into the radius component of the circle. Okay, so I'll hide some of these things and see what's going on. So you can see now how this works. As we move the point, it's changing the radius of those circles to reflect that. And because it's going from the minimum distance, remapping to the minimum size, the closer the circle is to the point, the closer it is to point 0.1. And the further it is, the closer it is to point 0.5. And the reason I do these domains and remappings is because I want to have precise control of my geometry. I don't want the circles to get too small or too big. So in this case, I'm guaranteed that the furthest circle is going to be 0.5, and 
and the closest circle is going to be 0.1. And now with this remap, I can change my target domain uh, to have control over my geometry. So I can change the maximum, change the minimum. I can also flip the relationship so the closest point will actually be the biggest circle. And I just flip those numbers into the inputs and now the biggest circles are happening where they're closest to the point. Okay, so that's kind of a basic example of relational geometry.